Hey all, Tom here, and welcome back to another episode of Car Topics Explained, I guess. Today I am going to answer the question that clearly needs to be asked. Is the current push towards banning internal combustion engines in the next few decades truly good for the environment? In short, are electric vehicles the global environment saving inventions they've been made out to be by media and governments? Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's all agree on one thing. People that are of the belief that buying and building brand new electric vehicles is better for the environment than simply maintaining your current vehicle for 5 to 10 years is plain ridiculous. You cannot consume your way to a better world. Buying a Tesla or a Prius might make you feel like a good person, but the car still has to be built out of resources mined toxically from the planet. It has to be built, transported by plane, train, or boat, depending on your budget. It should make sense that making things last longer will help the Earth last longer. That's not an unreasonable thing to argue, right? Anyways, as the human population grows, our global energy use grows even faster. And much faster than you'd expect, because developing countries contribute to more than half of the world's CO2 emissions. So even if developed countries cut down on their decadence, telling low to middle income countries to stop trying to grow to cut back on emissions would seem disingenuous and a ploy to slow their progress. Bear that in mind as we also take into account that electric vehicles will all have to depend on the power grid for the energy they need to move. And as demands grow, along with the added energy needed to power a nation of people's driving EVs, it will be awkward to find a clean way to generate that electricity. In fact, making the jump to an all EV world is like skipping a step like going outside without putting clothes on, or even shoes on, or trying to fly a plane without learning how, like building a platform or a house without supports or a foundation. You have to work on the supporting structures first before you build what goes on top. For instance, nuclear energy is not the terrifying doomed technology many believe it is to be today. And it may seem to be a better candidate for energy production than renewables because renewable sources of energy would definitely struggle to fill the void left behind when we finally get rid of all fossil fuel burning energy plants. And we ultimately can't ignore things like hydropower, geothermal, solar, or wind energy either. It would make sense to invest in better ways to generate energy in general before we increase our energy dependency further. Now do I know which one will ultimately be the best choice? No. But investing in all of them and seeing which one works out doesn't seem like a bad idea to me. Even so, why are we targeting cars first? What about the meat industry? We could solve that by investing in research of ethical and humane ways to farm animals or creating synthetic meat or proteins in general. It's not like people actually care where their food comes from, otherwise fast food companies would not exist. Animal-based food products make up half of the emissions made by food production, which is insane since animal products make up less than 20% of the world's calories. And what makes it even better is that in terms of protein, animal products make up less than 40% on a global scale. And not just meat, there's the pollution generated from crops via fertilization and other things like that, or even just manure. So not even a strict no meat diet can lead to a zero emissions lifestyle or solution. The methane emissions of rice cultivation makes it a comparable polluter to global air traffic. And the worst part is, as the populations of countries become wealthier and more comfortable, they'll want more food, which will ultimately lead to more emissions. It's not hard to rack up a high score in the pollutions game. There is also the transportation industry. Planes, boats, trains, you know, the things delivering your shiny new green Porsche Taycan. Oh, and trucks. I don't know how I forgot to say that since I drive one for a living. Moving on. The CO2 pollution of us running our homes is actually bigger than that of cars. Two meters of road is just as polluting as building a new car. 
And get this, in the US alone, an average of over 30,000 miles of new roads are paved each year, which is the equivalent of over 48 million meters of road, which is like building 24 million cars each year. At least if my math is correct, I think. If I'm wrong, that's great. Because <laughs> if not, that's terrible. So what does it matter if we're all driving EVs by 2030 in nine years time, if we then continue to pave over 400 million meters of road over the course of that time, aka 270,000 miles, aka the pollution equivalent to 216 million cars. That is, if nothing changes the way we make roads. It's tricky, isn't it? It's not quite as simple as, you got yourself into this mess, now get yourself back out. I guess Nemo lied to us all. The effort it takes to knock over a large bookcase and spill its contents everywhere is nowhere near as demanding as lifting it back up and putting all the books back. It's the same with rapid climate change. We've set so many processes in motion, the momentum is very strong, the solution is difficult to imagine. We definitely need to reduce our emissions. Technologies like carbon capture may help in reducing the amounts of CO2 in the air. Stuff like Porsche's synthetic fuel could be a good solution as well. Hopefully it is. A lot of this will unfortunately involve going back and undoing, or correcting, a lot of mistakes we've made. And the main issue with our current transition to banning internal combustion engines is that it feels short-sighted, or not very well thought through. Like a bunch of politicians hopped on a trend, people invested in the EV industry, now everyone wants it to become dominant without actually thinking about how to make it work and the repercussions of it all. Unless if you're talking about the repercussions of uh, your wallets. Instead, it feels like a public relations stunt. Like, hey, we're banning internal combustion engines in cars because we want to help the environment. You know, remember guys, we're good people. You should vote for us in order to hide more short-term gains, either political or monetary. I'm really starting to sound like a conspiracy theorist, aren't I? <laughs> I'm hoping I'm not crazy. But, in my opinion, if they truly wanted to invest in the long-term health of the Earth and all life on it for thousands of years to come, then why aren't they doing things they expect them to be doing if that was their true goal? But, I digress. If road cars absolutely must be made better for the environment first over everything else, then what about synthetic fuel? Like the e-fuel Porsche is developing claiming will make all internal combustion powered cars just as environmentally friendly as EVs. Perhaps I'll cover that in my next video. I've been thinking a lot about this, so I've got quite a few videos planned as I'm very passionate about this for obvious reasons. The next ones being more car related, but I thought it would be best to use statistics as a foundation before I start making claims and taking stances. At least I hope that's what I did today, and I hope I was successful about it. And of course, I will include the sources I have used to begin this conversation with you guys, because that's what it's all about. I want to start this discussion, and hopefully I'm informed, and hopefully I'm informing you guys. Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope to see you all next time.